Hello, Shane McCusker here, Intelligent Software. I am doing a video today with the wonderful Vanessa Rath. And uh, Vanessa's waving at me. I don't know if the camera switched over. Uh, we're doing a, a series of blogs uh, on my website uh, looking at data privacy. And um, South Africa has legislation in called POPIA, which is uh, similar to GDPR, although subtly different in some areas. And it's currently in a transition period and is fully enforceable from uh, the middle of this year, 2021. So, Vanessa, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's a Friday, so I'm happy and I'm really excited to talk about this topic. So just to kind of set the scene, uh, Shane and I chat often and he actually said to me, Van, I want to set up a conversation with you around the Poppy Act. And I said, well, I'm probably not the right person to be speaking to because I haven't done a lot of research into it yet and I'm not really clued up. So we thought let's actually set up a conversation where we can find out what the word is on the streets about Poppy and what we really should be doing. So we've got the expert Shane here. I'm going to pick his brain on your behalf. So um, Shane, can I start with my first question? Oh yeah, work away. <laughs> Excellent. I'm not an so, expert, by the way. Just just let's get that straight. I'm not an expert. I, I develop intelligence software and two and a half years ago, we went through the joys of GDPR with our clients there. Now we're doing it again with Poppy and it's really important. I have a passion for this area. So yeah, absolutely. What can I do, Vanessa? Excellent. So, so, so as most of you know, um, I'm a talent sourcing trainer and I train people all over the world and I often knock heads against GDPR in the UK and my European clients, but it's now coming to South Africa and I get a lot of questions in my training from particularly the people in South Africa themselves around the Poppy Act. And I really don't know how to answer some of these questions. So the main one that I get asked is from a sourcing perspective, are we still able to source candidates? Are we still able to go after passive talent? What is your thoughts around that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Th this so is I'm still going to have a job. Thank you. Yeah, you are indeed. You are indeed. We, we saw this in, in, in GDPR, exactly the same scenario. And the, the, the issue that you're really getting to is that to store people's data, they need to be aware that you, you store their data, they need to have some level of control and you need to have a reason to store their data as well. Uh, and yeah, I can talk about that if you want me to. Some people talk about compliance, which I don't like, and I'll explain why. The issue you have is when somebody is not an applicant, but they are somebody that you find either through mm. word of mouth or through a job board or through LinkedIn or, or, or through other sourcing channels, how do you have a purpose, a legitimate purpose for storing their data under privacy legislation. Whether so, so let me stop you there because I'm not a storer of data, okay? I'm looking for people, I'm looking for their information, I'm looking for their contact details. However, I find those contact details more than likely using a Chrome extension. What is the definition of storing? I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't put them into a CRM, I don't put them into an ATS system. Okay. Um, if anything, I would put them onto a spreadsheet and deliver my sourcing services to a client. Is that class the storing? Yes. Uh, it's, okay. it's an electronic format. So spreadsheet, okay. yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. Poppia is, is, and GDPR look at, at electronic storage of data. Um, so yeah, if you, if, you, if you have stuff stored in your head, that doesn't count in terms of, in terms of the acts. And let's see, it's also, if you store stuff in your head, quite secure as well. Um, so, I mean, think, think about, I mean, legislation is only one reason I get excited about data privacy and it's probably the least important. Uh, the, the other two reasons are uh, the risks associated with data. Because if you have data and, and something happens, you know, it gets used for the wrong purpose. You get hacked. Even if you don't know if that data has been accessed, you've got a huge problem because you're responsible. And, and if that information is used against you in some way, shape or form, that can destroy your business. And the other thing is, you know, data is good, even though there's a liability to it. If it's useful data, then it's good to have it. You can do things with it. And, and the, the, the moral of, the, of the, the legislation says, you know, if you've got data, use it, you know, have a reason for having it, have a purpose, and then do that. And if you do that, okay. then, then you're, you're in line with data privacy. So yeah, if you've got source data, you can absolutely keep it and use it for the purpose. No. Okay. So, so let me, can I paint a, a scenario for you yeah. then? Okay. So I'm sourcing. Uh, um, I find a candidate on one of the tech sites. Okay. Let's say it's Kaggle. 
and I get the person's email address off that website. And I send them an email. They're not on the market, completely passive talent. And I start building a relationship with them, potentially tell them about an amazing opportunity um, that I have for them, et cetera, et cetera. Do I need to inform that candidate how I got their email address? Y yes and no. You, you, okay. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert in terms of the legislation, so I'm going to caveat, right? So... Uh, yes and no. Uh, the answer the answer is that you need to, there's a level of openness. There's a requirement for openness with regards to you know what you do and how you operate. So if you're doing something that's a, a bit underhand or whatever it is, then then you could you could have issues there. Where did you get the data from? You know, but what you're talking about is getting data from from public sources and uh, cross referencing that. You you might find somebody on Twitter and then cross reference it to. To, to, to LinkedIn and then realize, oh, well, we can find this person on the job board and that's how you get their contact details or you use a Chrome extension or you use whatever, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, that's complicated. You, you, you don't, does, does, does the person you're contacting need to have that detail? I wouldn't hide it from them, but I don't necessarily need to go into it. But that's the what thing, I'm thinking, because I mean, that could be three paragraphs worth of um, me explaining exactly. how I source and exactly. people really don't care about that. No, I mean, at the end of the day, you're, you're reach, so think about what you're doing. You've found somebody and you're reaching out to them to say, look, mm. we're, we're a professional uh, recruiter sourcer and we want to engage with you for this reason. This is our purpose. This is yeah. what we're going to do with your data. That's why we got it. We, we, we're contacting you because we think it's in your interests. Now, yeah. if you don't want us to engage with you, then let us know and we won't. Uh, so do we to... need to put that disclaimer on our email signature? Um, probably. Probably is a good thing to do because it's easy to do. I mean, if things are easy to do and they 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 create transparency and they yeah. they allow people to understand what you're doing with their data, then do it. It's a good thing to do. You know, on your you want on your website your privacy policies. Uh, you want to say um, you know what it what your process is or what your purpose is. Lots of people put email disclaimers on the bottom of email saying, you know, that this, this, if you get this in error. That, that one in there, like the size three font that no one ever reads. Yeah. That those disclaimers. Okay. Yeah. I, the, I'm, I, well, what's the purpose of that? They're, they're not, they're, they don't form a contract. They're not legally enforceable in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Uh, but they're just about educating people as to say, you know, we're trying to do the right thing here. You know, yeah. so there's no, I mean, th th there's no, if you send an email out saying to somebody, well, if you get this in error, delete it, and you know, they have no obligation to do so. There's no contract for them to yeah. say so, so, you know. So, so um, another, another question around this is that, you know, this is maybe more from a GDPR perspective, but I know it's going to be, you know, it will also come down to Poppy when it's introduced. Um, so I taught a, a, trained a global company and I met with the head of legal for this company. And they said to me is that from a GDPR perspective that I found the person on LinkedIn, they're not a first connection of mine, they were a second or third connection of mine. I then found their email address, I then sent them an email. But because I hadn't reached out to them on the platform of LinkedIn and they weren't a connection, I had no right to have their email address. What are your thoughts around that? Depends how you got their email address. I mean, if you... Oh, just a Chrome <laughs> extension. I mean, come on. Okay, it's not okay, probably well, like an international espionage. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're hacking systems and stealing data, yeah, you have no right to it. But no, if this no. is information you find not yet. In, in, in a legitimate way, then I would have thought you're, you're entitled to it. Now, let, let me clarify something that's really important, is that, you know, whenever you get data and you have a purpose, um, it has to be time limited. So you can't say... Well, we want to hold the data forever. Okay. It's not appropriate. And it has to have a, a retention period. And it's going to be a short retention period. So if you get somebody and you, 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 you get their details, you have an obligation to contact them promptly and say, you know, we've got your details. We want to engage with you for whatever, for our purpose, uh, whatever the purpose is. Um, can we do that? And if they mm -hmm. don't respond under under GDPR, it's thirty days. Poppy hasn't hasn't quite defined it as tightly, but it's going to be some similar. Okay, thirty days, three or four weeks. That's the sort of time frame that is reasonable to reach out to somebody and try and communicate with them. And if they don't come back to you, um, or if they come back to you and say no, we don't want to work with you, but if they don't come back to you after, say, four weeks, thirty days, you've got to delete their data. Um, sure. You know, so so that. That is, you know, whenever you said, do you, can you hold on to data? You can for a purpose of a legitimate reason to try and contact somebody. Yeah. You can't hold it forever. So, so 
Okay, so where does this leave your average, and you know that I deal with recruitment agencies, I deal with internal recruiting teams. What do these teams need to do from an agency perspective or from an internal perspective? Because, I mean, I know these guys are sitting with massive databases, uh, databases or maybe as I sometimes refer to them as graveyards because they haven't been updated or dealt with or done anything to them forever. In, now, for the middle of this year, Poppy comes in. Shane, what's your advice? What should these people be doing? I mean, let's get prepared for this. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so there's there's a couple of issues um, that that need to be looked at. The general, I, I mean, there's people you and I both know, Ross Saunders, who we both very think well. very highly of. Big so, if, fan some, of if, Ross. Some, if somebody yes. wants proper advice on this, <laughs> Ross is Ross is the man we are both talking. About. That said, uh, Abso in South Africa have also done stuff. I've done a video with uh, Roly Borman, who was d- doing a lot of training and stuff around okay. popular. So yeah, there- I believe he is for Epso. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, so you can check out my blog page and you'll see my conversation with them. Some of that I, I disagree with and really with, with respect to really, and I did raise this with them uh, and it's in my blog, why I, I have different opinions on it. Because, you know, bear in mind that this is, Poppy is new legislation. People don't really know how it's going to work in practice. Yeah. And that's why I presume there's these disagreements happening because we well, just don't know. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky having gone through GDPR, and I'm going to assume that the way GDPR sort of landed, Poppy is going to do something similar. Uh, and so I can draw parallels there. Um, uh, so yeah, let's go back. What, 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 what are the challenges? So you may think that, well, we need to comply, and we need, yeah. to, we need to tick the boxes. Once we tick the boxes, great. This is the truth of what happened in GDPR. Everybody that I spoke to, generally had the view of, oh, this legislation is coming in. What, how do we work around it? How do we prevent it stopping us doing what <laughs> we want loophole? to do? Where are the loopholes? What's the least we can do to tick the box that we've complied? Yeah. And between you and me, I suspect the same is going to happen with Poppia. Totally. And, and, South Africans and, will always find a loophole. And Poppia doesn't have the teeth that GDPR has. The fines aren't there in the same way. And... Uh, GDPR, I mean, nobody's come knocking on, 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 on a lot of doors with regard to um, enforcing GDPR. What happens with GDPR, and the, the, the reason that people get into trouble with it uh, is because the Information Commission has to investigate. I suspect it'll be the same with Poppy. And the, okay. trigger, and the trigger for that, wait to hear this one, Vanessa. The trigger for that is almost certainly the people who, who are being investigated are the ones that report. Because there's a there's a reporting aspect of, of GDPR as there is with Poppy. Poppy is looser than GDPR. Um, you've got seventy. So what do you have to report on? Oh, if you think you have a data breach, you have to report it. Oh, okay. And therefore, the information commissioner has has an obligation to some extent to investigate it. So you basically uh, that, are that, reporting that, yourself. Now there 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 are caveats. On, yeah, exactly. There are caveats out in terms of the seriousness of the issue and all the rest of it in terms of your your comments report. So that's probably what's going to happen. Um, however, let's get let's go back. Let's go back to, to actually the question you asked way the back question, when, and I, I'm do, going to repeat what this. Do, <laughs> <laughs> what do agencies and internal teams need to do to get ready? Like, okay. so we now what where are we? We're sitting in early February. Okay, so there's there's getting ready, and after getting ready, there's actually running a business that is going to be data privacy aware. I've uh-huh. been using the phrase embracing data privacy. So to get ready, <laughs> loving it, you, you need to you, to get ready. You need to work out what it is you're doing. You need to work out what your what data you've got, what data you need, what is your purpose for the data. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the purpose gives you, you know, it answers lots of questions you're going to ask get asked when you do these audits. You know, what is your purpose for holding data? Uh, if you start talking about compliance, um, I think you're going to have a problem. Uh, and and also, I think for most recruiters, it's not appropriate. So compliance is there for if you were a marketeer, you ask people, do I have your con- oh, sorry, not compliance consent? Do I have your consent to send you emails out, marketing literature? So so I remember the night before GDPR came into play, my inbox was suddenly full of a whole yeah. lot of consent emails. Yeah, yeah. And it literally was people you'd never heard 50, of yeah, had your exactly. data. And yeah. now they were asking your consent to send you yeah, like, marketing you? information. You? Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Consent is fine if you're a marketeer because consent is a one-way street with regard to a contract. In other words, you give me consent for me to send you stuff, but there's no obligation on me to send you stuff. Okay. So there's, mm-hmm. no, there's no contract 
there in two, a two-way street. But that's not really how recruiters work. Recruiters uh, operate um, on a more two-way contractual basis. In other words, you give me your data, and in return, I will provide recruitment services to you. Okay. But there's obligations on you as well. The data you give me has to be up to date, and it has to be accurate. And if it's not, then don't expect me to provide recruitment services. You need to take my phone call when I ring you up for a legitimate reason. You know, these, these are the contracts. Yeah. And in return, I will look for jobs for you. I will, I will compare your mm -hmm. data against the jobs that I have. I will keep your data up to date. I will operate in a professional manner. Okay. Uh, you can talk to, you look at ABSO and the ethics and all the rest of it being a recruiter. So there is a contract mm -hmm. there. So in actual fact, what, what I believe, is my opinion, which is no standing whatsoever from a legal point of view, is that you, your purpose is to provide recruitment services. And yeah. under that contract, you have, you, you, you can legitimately store data on your data subjects. For how long? Whilst you're providing the service that you're providing twice you're providing okay. recruitment services. So okay. think about your provision of recruitment services. Your recruit, if you update their, their data from, from LinkedIn, that's provision of recruitment services. If you reach out to them and say, we've got a job. If you even just search their data against jobs, you're providing recruitment services. Okay, so, so that would that would be brilliant from an agency perspective. I mean, that's, that's very clear. What, how does this affect an internal team? Um, depends on what the internal team do. And it depends so, on, on, so so yes, if, if from an agency, and I deal mainly with agencies, you're providing an ongoing service mm -hmm. for a, a, a corporate or, or indeed an agency where, where the applicant is a very specific application. It's, just, it's an application for one particular role and, and the, uh, and, and they do, the person does not want to engage in future uh, recruitment services, ongoing recruitment services. Well, they, think about it. You're, you've got a purpose. So you need to retain the data for the duration appropriate for that purpose. Okay. But you say, say you have, a, again, agency model. You, somebody applies and you forward them for a job to your client. And you do, you do not want to work with the, the candidate again for whatever reason, or, or it's not appropriate to. Some of your data, you don't need anymore. Like their CV. Some of yeah. it you do need because it, it reflects your relationship with your client. So you got to keep the stuff that's related to the client. So if you think about all this, this, this moves into sure. uh, away from uh, your, your question about what you need to do to, to get to the, the cross the yeah. threshold of, you know, this is now I'm talking about, well, how are you going to maintain a data privacy approach? Yeah. So, you know, so, and it comes across as retention policies. And yeah. Then, what, you, what you're going to do to delete data. So, you know, with any, when any uh, recruitment agency say, you will have multiple recruitment retention policies. You've got your sourced candidates and you want to get rid of them within 30 days if they don't come back to you to say they want your service. So they need to come out of your ATS system. You need to delete them, yeah. Yeah, okay. De delete, uh, to delete their personal data, okay? So there's okay. a partial, partial deletion. You've got people that... Um, uh, are agreeing to ongoing recruitment services. So you're going to keep them for for a period of time until you stop providing those services. You've got people- that Is that to, to the candidate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, the, so candidate, over, the candidate turns around and says, thank you so much for your help, Vanessa, but I have found another job. You've got to delete them. No, uh, but because the, it, they, they may be saying, but that's okay, you can keep me on the database and, and keep me informed of other opportunities. That's fine. If they turn around and say, Vanessa, I'm retiring, I don't want to be okay. to be involved in the job market anymore. Um, yeah. Then, then absolutely delete them because they it's not appropriate to provide recruitment services to somebody who's not ever going to take a job, or if they exactly. em emigrate and 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 leave the country yeah. early, or even if you you work in in Johannesburg and they move to Cape Town, you don't do any work in Cape Town. Then what's the point in having them on their on your database? You know, get get rid of them. So, so, so you'd actually need a a very smart way to. I don't know. You'd almost need like a mailer to go out to your entire database to get a status update. Yeah, yeah, mm. you do. I mean, well, well, you do and you don't. I mean, that's one way of doing it. And and certainly, whenever you know, at this point in time, that's a good idea. You know, contact yeah. everybody, get your plan in place, contact everybody, and tell them what the plan is. You know, and, yeah. and say and 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 these. This is your way of telling us what's going on. This is how you update your information. So, yeah, a big part of of the plan is that how are you going to maintain the accuracy of your data? 
How are mm-hmm. you going to engage with everybody? But this is a benefit. You know, there's no there's no downside in contacting all your candidates and telling them yeah. what you're doing. You know, if yeah, nothing yeah. else, you're reminding them. And and if you do it on an ongoing basis, then they will know who you are. So if you don't yeah. have, if you ring them up in six months' time and they haven't heard from you, then they'll go, "Who are you?" If you if they're constantly getting emails from you telling them what's going on, here's some industry news for you. Here's our blog. This is this mm-hmm. is these are the types of jobs we've got coming on at the moment. When you ring them up, they're going to know who you are. They're going yeah. to take your call. You know, so it's there's there's lots of opportunities associated with being yeah. on top of data privacy. Absolutely. No, it makes sense. I mean, you're saying top of mind. I mean, that's what you're trying to do, clearly. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. I think I've been talking all over the shop here in terms of, <laughs> I don't think I've given you any any particularly focused answer to anything that's coming up. So, yeah, so so in summary then, so for, uh, so for the types of people that recruiters deal with, Poppy relates to both individuals and companies. So you yeah. reflect this on the client side as well. But if you look at just candidates, you've got different types of candidates and you will store their data for different lengths of time. You'll have data, different retention periods for that, which have different start dates and different mm-hmm. criteria. And so, so searching a database for who you have to delete is probably the most complex type of searching you're ever going to do. Yeah, You can't so do you it be- with a Boolean search. I was, I was about to say, you better hope that your database allows you to use a Boolean because this, I mean, this is going to be impossible. I would rather take the approach of getting hold of everyone and having that conversation with them and getting their permission. I mean, would that be literally, okay, is your email address still x, y, and z at gmail.com? Can I send you a consent form or can you get it verbally? You're using that word consent again, Vanessa. <laughs> but that's what I'm, I mean, allowing yeah, them to you keep can, you on their database. You can, you can get it verbally. You can get it in any way that that, okay. that is, is appropriate, uh, if that's your plan. If that's your plan. You know, at the end of the day, you you and you need to demonstrate. You need to demonstrate. You need to record it. So there is a recording uh, requirement under the legislation. But really, if you, if if you agree, if you get an agreement with somebody and you're doing what you say you do, then there's n- you can't, there's not a lot of comeback on you, really. You know, um, uh, so you know it's about having a plan and doing it right. Yeah. So yeah. So um, so there we go. We'll be. Uh, so is there anything else there that, 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 that you know, I mean, in terms of the, the difficulties of, of getting across the line with this and getting yourself set up and getting your plan in place and then operating your plan on an ongoing basis mm. are, the, are, the, are the two stumbling blocks. But if you do it right, there's lots of great opportunities for you. Okay. So, so there's, it's not something that people need to be particularly nervous about. I mean, what I'm hearing is that, sure, you're going to might have to change certain things. You might have to get in contact with your, your candidates, et cetera, et cetera. But it's good because you're going to be staying top of mind. And they're going to remember you. You can start opening conversations again, find out where they're at, and basically just clean up your data. I mean, dirty data is just useless, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, y- Say it quickly and it doesn't sound too difficult. Uh, <laughs> in, well, I, I thought in, the quicker the better. <laughs> well, in, in reality, I mean, we're dealing with customers who have hundreds of thousands of candidates. I mean, that's not a job for a manual. That's not a manual. Pro- you need a process to be able to, to do that. And yeah. you need a process that that is so simple it won't take up any of your time. You can't, you, you know, because the work, I mean, tidying up data is not the most profitable activity an organization is ever going to engage oh, no. in. You know, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the resultant of that is, is where you work smarter and more effectively and make more mm. investments. But, but also, the, if, you've got, if you've got all of these processes set up in place, and I'm literally thinking down to the right fields in place on a, some kind of an electronic software CRM ATS, then it shouldn't actually be too difficult. So for me, it's actually taking a step back and saying, okay, is our system going to do this for us? Or do we need to get a system that is going to do it for us? Because as you say, you don't want to be wasting man hours on these kind of activities. When you know they're coming into play, you know how to deal with them, get the right software to make your life easier. It's a no brainer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, which is why I've spent the last 12 months or more reevaluating all our processes and software (laughs) with regards to to how, how you do this. Uh, yeah. I mean, so so yeah, searching for people to delete is something above and beyond the vast majority of recruitment software systems. I'm talking globally. Poppy mm. has some specific requirements for it. Uh, so um, 
you you know it causes causes extra problems i think we're probably now ahead of the game with regard to being able to search we're also ahead of the game with regard to being able to delete because deleting records this is this is a there's a really interesting uh dilemma if somebody asks you to delete their data you have to delete their data but you also have to prove you've deleted their data so you have to maintain some of it to prove you've deleted it oh my word so what would that be like a name and surname yeah, you have to you have to maintain enough that is that is that is able to well, it was uniquely identifiable. Names are not uniquely identifiable. So I mean not in what, South Africa anyway. No. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, nowhere, nowhere. Um, particularly with big databases. So yeah, you need to maintain enough that you you can you can work out what you've done, but you want to delete all the sensitive stuff, C V information, um, is, is the most sensitive stuff or employment information, most, salary the, information. Uh, the most unique sort of thing to a South African, I would say, is our ID numbers because, I mean, that's unique to each individual. So that would potentially be something that, you know, you'd need to consider. Yeah, if you have it. So, so I mean, bear in mind that you, you've, you've, you know, if you're, if you're pulling people in from LinkedIn, you don't have a, an ID number, you know, no. so you've, you've got to have enough information but then to you uniquely would... identify people uh, across a number of different ways, I would think. Absolutely. But then we get down back to the argument that we were talking about right at the beginning, the difference between the applicant and the candidate, which is, you know, depends whether the agency is more focused on applicants or whether they're more progressive and thinking candidates. Yeah. Source yeah. talent as opposed to people that have applied. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think so, different so, people are going to work in different ways. So we'll have different, uh, different sorts of data. Um. Yeah, absolutely. There are, there are plenty of yeah. recruiters and agencies who do not source data. Everything's yep. an applicant. Yep. And they they have different problems than somebody. Well, there's somebody who's, who adds in sourced candidates on top of that has, an, has another layer of complexity because of the <laughs> fact they need to convert those people into people that have agreed some yeah. contractual basis or, or consented to you having their data. Otherwise, you've got to get rid of it and get rid of it fairly quickly. Yeah. yeah. So, so interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a real a real challenge, and uh, you know, I mean, something I've been working really hard on to look at how we can facilitate our clients implementing systems that can do this stuff really well. And and what are you finding from the South African perspective? Are South Africans quite keen on this? Are they thinking, oh my gosh, we've got another regulation in place, or is is there a willingness to comply? Um. Whether they're willing or not, they have to. Uh, so we're, you know, we're getting plenty of people that that want to comply, and uh, the the reason that they want to comply is one, it's the law, mm -hmm. but also the law is there to protect their candidates and clients. So, do you want to be the recruiter who it becomes obvious to your candidates and clients that you don't care about their privacy? Yeah, no, no, no one do, wants to be you, that person. No, so, so you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's not just legislation that that is there for fun. You know, it's there's real risks to it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you know, if data breaches, hacks, you know, if yeah, I mean, one if of our biggest problems in South Africa is ID theft and fraud, and you know, we deal with corruption every day, and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I completely get it. I think we know, you know, better than other countries about how, how dangerous this is. Shane, I've just got one more question that I want to ask you quickly sure. is that if I think about it, okay, now that we're having this conversation, my Outlook email is, is a solid database. It, that, that probably is my database. I'll say I don't have one, but I literally cloned my database from my previous company where I was mainly because I wanted email formats. I mean, I haven't touched any candidates that goes against my, my ethics and values, but I know that I'm probably sitting with, let's, let's think about it, 12 years worth of communication. I've probably got CVs of people on there. Do I have an issue? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you have a big issue. Um, uh, this is a good example of a, of, of a system that has been designed uh, uh, without any thought about data privacy whatsoever. And it's email. Email is a nightmare yeah. because email systems, if you think about it, you get an email in from somebody, it has somebody else's email address in the CC field. It, yeah. it relates to stuff. And if you want to do anything with that, I reply to it or forward it on, you're effectively taking a copy of that data 
and forwarding oh, it or replying it. Sake. So, yeah. so you know, think about it. If you get an email, you reply, you copy the data. But if you ever wanted to delete that data because you don't need it anymore, you've now got to delete multiple copies. And not only that, if you CC or BCC people into emails, then they're also getting copies of the data, which you are in control of. So you have some level of responsibility for what they do with the data as well. So email systems are a disaster. And then in terms of, okay, apply a retention policy to it. You, you really have no subtlety there. You just say, well, we're, okay, we're going to delete anything that's more than six months old. And, and, but you need some of that stuff. You might have a legal I, I need a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So how, how then do you work out what, what, you, what you need and what you don't need? And to set a timer on that so that it disappears after its retention. I, I, it's, email, to my mind, is just a, an absolute nightmare. Yeah. The stuff that causes, throws through the disaster and email systems, spreadsheets sitting on people's uh, computers, even mm-hmm. post-it notes stuck to, you know, I, I mean, okay, they may not fall under uh, an electronic regulation, but they fall under a, what happens if, if, if it gets lost or what happens mm-hmm. if it gets stolen or what, you know, you've got data breach issues there and you've just got general data control issues about yeah. having this random stuff floating around Google docs, you know? Yeah. Let's ask another question. From a from a data retention, data privacy point of view, what happens if you lose your mobile phone? You know, what what impact does that have? Or oh, like, well, what happens this this week when my entire laptop crashed? Yeah, or or yeah, if you you drop it and it breaks, you you know, yeah. I mean these these are these are data privacy issues in the sense that if you lose data, you know, yeah. it's destroyed, gone forever. What impact does that have on you? You yeah. you you maybe have agreed contracts with people that you can no longer fulfill i mean there's a liability associated with that and your contract Absolutely. if you're a recruiter is that you've you've said to people that you will you will provide recruitment services to them so yeah, yeah th- there's there's huge sure. problems here uh that need to be addressed but they should be addressed so they sh- so i mean all your data should be going into a central proper information management system that you can use to understand that you can sort it out did you can partially yeah. delete data when you want to and you know and, it's and gone. with the timer because i mean there's yeah. no ways let's face it i'm sourcing candidates there's no ways i'm going to remember in 30 days time I'm actually going to delete all of those guys because they didn't respond to you or you know well, that's that's a problem whenever you know how do you know because you know you you source somebody you pull them in so if they don't respond after 30 days you got to delete them but at the time you pull them in you don't know if they're not going to respond or not so exactly. you can't set a timer then yeah. you've only got to go back retrospectively and say okay well we haven't had a response from therefore we've got to get rid of it yeah uh, email systems are sure. a huge huge problem so i mean my advice is to get a well our system does it it synchronizes email systems across and therefore it's in you're in control of it and then get rid of the get rid of the, the original emails you know you don't need them okay you know yeah so, yeah, yeah huge huge problem emails yeah. spreadsheets uncontrolled data that just collects you go through life vanessa picking up data every day yeah, you get data in you can't stop it you've mm. got to get rid of it mm. Jeez, it's, it's so different it's such a different mindset isn't it i mean this is not something that i've ever had to think about before um you have had to but i don't think you have like everybody else you go through life in in your little trusting bubble that you yeah. think that nobody's going to steal my data and I'm not going mm. to lose it and my computer is going to keep on working forever and you just assume it does until it doesn't. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and and if you assume it, I mean, we we do all the data security stuff, not in case something's going to go wrong. We know something's going to go wrong. We just don't know when it's going to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. that's so, probably the safest bet with technology these days as, yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Just as it will go wrong. It'll go wrong sometime. And then what are we going to do? Let's be you prepared. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. So, so there you go. Well, look, that's sort of that that wow. sort of thing. Thank you so much for your time today, Vanessa. I hope that's been interesting and useful for you and sure. anybody watching this it's video. Definitely made me think.